If there's one blogger many in the UK have heard of and wish they hadn't, it's Guido Fawkes. Guido Fawkes is the name of a blog run by a right-wing libertarian blogger named Paul Staines, who also writes a regular column for the right-wing Rupert Murdoch-owned tabloid The Sun. The blog specialises in salacious or scurrilous gossip and revelations about MPs' private lives, what they write in their emails, or who they've had sex with, and so on. Set up in 2004, during the peak of the anti-war movement in the UK, the website rapidly became one of the most popular in Britain. Today, according to Alexa, it ranks at 855 in the UK and 31,154 in the world. Most recently, the blog made headlines in reporting such as this by Sky News by commandeering a tank and riding it through central London to champion the cause of a well-known right-wing BBC presenter, Jeremy Clarkson. Clarkson had beat up a worker for which the BBC had suspended him. Guido Fawkes denounced the BBC's bosses as left-wing and demanded Clarkson's reinstatement. Too bad. Clarkson was fired. That's the left-wing metropolitan BBC for you. In general, Staines likes to present himself as someone outside the political establishment, a thorn in its side, a colourful gadfly assailing the hypocrisies of Westminster elite. Yet he regularly attends fundraising events run by the Conservative Party, as Vox Political reported, and his 10th anniversary bash for his website in 2014 was attended by leading Conservative politicians, and Prime Minister David Cameron even sent a recorded video message for the event, as shown by The Guardian. So is Paul Staines really anything other than a boring Conservative partisan? And is Guido Fawkes anything but another online outlet of Conservative propaganda? Let's look at Stain's political training. He came of political age in the early years of Margaret Thatcher's hard right reign in the United Kingdom. As a conservative student, he tended toward the libertarian end of the spectrum, describing his own politics as Thatcher on drugs. A rabid anti-communist, he went to spend the 1980s under the tutelage of the obscure right-wing businessman and Tory operative David Hart. This involved him supporting the right-wing Angola UNITA death squads while helping Central American rightists and fascists who worked for the CIA to crush the elected leftist government of Nicaragua. He told The Guardian in an interview that he spent time riding around Angola in Central America, firing off AK-47s. It was bloody exciting. And he's still pretty gung-ho, he says. I don't have any problem with having raised money to kill communists. Staines, as part of his work for Hart, also edited a magazine produced by Hart's organisation, the Committee for a Free Britain, called British Briefing. This supposedly aspired to expose extreme left-wingers. In fact, it mainly worked to produce smears aimed at Labour MPs, left-wing lawyers and writers. It was funded in part by Rupert Murdoch and produced with the collaboration of an old CIA spook. In the same period, he worked for the Adam Smith Institute and got some training as an ideologue who could put the free market spin on the story of the day. And he didn't forget the drugs. As a libertarian, he infuriated his right-wing allies by dropping ecstasy tablets and participating in the rave counterculture, as The Telegraph reports. Following his work for the Institute, Stane spent years pursuing other thrill-seeking angles, gambling, brokering, bond dealing, until eventually he went bankrupt. Staines re-emerged in 2004 as a pseudonymous blogger calling himself Guido Fawkes and began publishing gossip about politicians, no doubt drawing on some of his old network of informants. His style certainly still bears the hallmarks of his red-baiting youth. His recent lurid attacks on the Liberal Democrat MP Mike Hancock, for instance, slander Hancock as a KGB agent, as a dodgy old Russophile, and basically as a communist. He relies upon already discredited claims that Hancock's parliamentary aide, a Russian national, was some sort of Russian agent and mixes it with sexual tittle-tattle from the tabloids. The big stories that have drawn audiences to Staines' website and which made his name in the newspapers and led to him being ranked among GQ's 100 most influential men in Britain in 2011 have typically involved rumour-mongering of this kind. For example, in 2006, he published claims about then-Deputy Prime Minister John Prescott engaging in an extramarital affair and naming the woman involved. He claimed that in so doing, he was defying the hypocritical silence of Westminster reporters who were all aware of the rumours. In fact, more likely is that by focusing on an alleged affair, 
Staines drew attention to himself, but also drew it away from an emerging bigger story which concerned Prescott's links to a hard right billionaire in the US named Philip Anschutz, who profited from New Labour's Millennium Dome wheeze. Perhaps slightly more courageous was his willingness to publish a photograph exposing the news of the world's fake sheikh, Mazar Mahmoud, a Murdoch hack who used disguises to try to stitch up politicians and celebrities. News of the World sent legal threats to every blogger who published them. Murdoch evidently take it to heart, however, since Staines is now on the payroll. Perhaps this is because, over the years, Staines has developed a profile as an attack dog of the right, using the methods of smear, hype, and tabloid headlines to go after individuals and organisations that the right doesn't like. A fairly typical instance of this is the allegations which appeared on the website accusing an organisation called the Smith Institute, a think tank set up in the memory of the former Labour leader John Smith, of engaging in illegal political activity. At the time, the Charity Commission was investigating whether the institute was too close to Chancellor Gordon Brown. Staines' grandstanding added almost nothing to the story, as it appeared in the newspapers, except that he claimed that the institute received kickbacks from the Treasury. What he meant was that it received tax relief for charitable donations in accord with the gift aid system. If this sounds boring, that's because it is. This is one of the few attempts by the website to do anything like journalism, and it is a characteristic flop. It's just as well that there is in fact almost no journalism and nothing of serious political interest on the website. Staines managed to position himself early on as a scoop magnet, someone who could be trusted to expose the dirty truths that the establishment media would not. But any reader would wait in vain for a long time to see a single scoop on the site. Many of the stories are simply cribbed from elsewhere, and not always with attribution. He even takes clips from popular television programmes and brands them with the Guido Fawkes logo as though he has some property in them. The real frisson that comes from reading Guido Fawkes derives from the fact that it delivers succinct nuggets of spite, sexual innuendo, and a bit of traditional rah-rah left-baiting. In the stakes of spite and sexual innuendo, one might mention his website's attempts to jokingly imply that Liberal Democrat MP Mark Oaten was a paedophile. When a story about Oaten's sexuality did emerge, he claimed credit, even though what was published was both trivial and nothing to do with his claims. In the stakes of left-baiting, one recent story which did get a mention in a newspaper consisted entirely of a post about a tweet by a minor local Green candidate and his reaction to it. The Green had cracked a dark joke about Nigel Farage on Twitter, inducing Staines to wax indignant in an article with the tabloid-style headline, Green Party Candidate in Sick Nazi Cancer Slur. He huffed that it showed the true face of the hard left. This was the story, a joke on Twitter that he didn't like. The Greens ludicrously gave Staines the time of day and even apologised without considering that this is a man for whom Jeremy Clarkson is a national hero. Clarkson is a man whose idea of a good joke is to recommend shooting all strikers and driving around Argentina in a Porsche with a number plate commemorating the Falklands War, causing near riots. The site is also filled with a potpourri of crude misogyny. One semi-regular feature is something called Totty Watch, as for women who get too uppity, the site's commenters suggest that they be stoned to death, circumcised, have their mouths sewn up, or worse. Guido Fox appeared on the British blog scene at an opportune moment. Many websites published serious and original news stories in the period in which Guido Fox was ascendant, from the blogs which published classified Foreign Office documents about the former diplomat Craig Murray to the earliest revelations of WikiLeaks. The problems of the internet was that official secrecy was increasingly impossible to guarantee. What the Guido Fox blog does is to attack not official secrecy, but, much of the time, personal privacy. It contrives stories and hypes totally uninteresting information, and most of it is now rabidly pro-government rather than critical in any sense. One could just as easily find the type of content that Staines offers at his current home, The Sun, or in the Daily Mail's infamous sidebar of shame, or the Daily Sport. So what is it that Guido Fawkes is actually doing that gives it a distinctive and even popular niche? 
The answer is that in blogging, it is all about the community. The blog format allows for a type of interpersonal relationship with readers and the formation of a milieu of commentators and guest contributors. Dins may have bolstered his credibility with media organizations, partly by grossly overstating the popularity of his website, as the rival blogger Tim Ireland reported on his site Bloggerheads, but he has succeeded in creating a convivial environment for cyber Tories and UKIP supporters on his website. This is integral to his self-positioning as a potential Matt Drudge for the UK. As he put it in his interview with The Guardian, I want the blogs to be a constituency politicians have to factor in. He has partially achieved his aim. The right-wing internet is an essential element of any Tory or UKIP political strategy, raising money, creating a sense of community in place of party structures, and circulating spin and gossip. Guido Fox was never anti-establishment. It only ever wanted to take its place in the establishment.